Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless proverbs 16 18 through 20 pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall better to be of a humble spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoil with the proud he who heeds the word wisely will find good and whoever trusts in the lord happy is he Pride Month is finally over, and what a month it was. Let's look at some of the highlights, starting in Toronto, where these lefties were losing it at what was apparently a family-friendly Pride event. Remember the good old days when first world cities had public indecency laws? I, I miss those days. <laughs> yes, some dude in a Bugs Bunny mask uh, dangling his doodle in a pride rally. Not sure what pride there is in that or this. <laughs> And in San Francisco, where anything goes nowadays, we had several school districts take young kids along to pride rallies. And this one, look at this clip. You can clearly see a completely naked man in the front row watching kids march. And staying in San Francisco, there was plenty more depravity and lefties losing it. <laughs> and if you're wondering why police didn't intervene, well, listen to what these officers had to say. And there's kids, you know, wandering around the van. I'm not sure on San Francisco's laws or California's laws, is it legal for nudity to be presented in front of kids? Nudity is legal, yeah, within, within certain boundaries. Within, what are the boundaries, do you know? Uh, you, coupled with a lewd act. Yeah, anything coupled with a lewd act or anything being done for sexual gratification that involves other people. Basically. Okay, but this event wouldn't be considered for sexual gratification. No, if they're, if they're walking around and it's out, that's, right, that'd be different than if they're masturbating. Oh. So it's fine as long as they're not masturbating, uh, if they're parading around, dancing suggestively in front of kids naked, that's okay in San Francisco. 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 13. But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, and from such people turn away. For of this sort are those who creep into households and make captives of gullible women, loaded down with sins, led away by various lusts, always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now as Jans and Jambres resisted Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds disapproved concerning the faith, but they will progress no further, for their folly will be made manifest to all, as theirs also was. But you have carefully followed my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, 
long-suffering, love, perseverance, persecutions, afflictions, which happened to me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra, what persecutions I endured, and out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. But evil men and impostors will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Biden's new normal is everyone must be accepting of homosexual behavior. That everyone must accept that a boy or girl can change their gender. That there is nothing wrong with murdering a baby in the womb. Anyone that does not go along with Biden's new normal is considered an extremist. I believe God has raised up Joe Biden for such a time as this. I believe God is using Joe Biden as judgment on the United States of America. Since Biden took office, every kind of evil has run amok. God will use anyone he chooses to fulfill his purpose. And I believe that purpose for Joe Biden is the destruction of America. The vape just call half the country, indeed more than half according to recent polls, extremists. Did she call half the country extremists? You know, we mock lefties losing it, but uh, sometimes they're just downright evil. The Bible's teaching on good versus evil leads to a challenging conclusion that every person is obligated to make a fundamental choice between the two. That choice is entirely determined by our response to God, who is both the definition of good and our creator. That means either following his will or rebelling and choosing to sin. 1 Corinthians 10.13 No temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But with the temptation will also make the way of escape, that you may be able to bear it eternally. This means we either choose to accept God and His salvation or align ourselves against Him. While we may be imperfect and fallible, we cannot be neutral in our approach to good versus evil. We are either seeking the goodness of God or the selfishness of evil. The prophet Isaiah put it succinctly, Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Did you know same-sex sexual activity used to be illegal in the U.S.? And did you know homosexuality was classified as a mental disorder in the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders beginning with the first edition published in 1952 by the American Psychiatric Association? In 1962, beginning with Illinois, states began to decriminalize same-sex sexual activity, and in 2003, through Lawrence v. Texas, all remaining laws against same-sex sexual activity were invalidated. In the United States, same-sex marriage became legal in all 50 states on June 26, 2015, when the Supreme Court ruled in Oberfeld v. Hodges that states' bans on same-sex marriage were unconstitutional. In opposition to the Lord's commands, the United States has legalized a sin that he warned would have dire consequences. Pride across America, the celebration keeps growing. The first pride marches were held at the end of June in 1970. Thousands of LGBTQ plus people gathered in New York, Los Angeles and Chicago to commemorate the Stonewall Uprising and to demonstrate for equal rights. Since then, the LGBTQ plus community and its supporters have continued to gather in June to celebrate Pride. Runners in New York marked the end of Pride Month with a race in Central Park. The nation's largest Pride Parade today in New York City, complete with colorful floats and spirited marching bands. I came in support of all the people at Pride and for equality and to support my child, Julian. <laughs> Hi. I think it's really fun as a community to be able to express our individuality, but together as a group. 
In Seattle, 56 couples from across the U.S. celebrated Pride Month by renewing their vows. You wish to renew your vows of marriage and love for your spouse and partner in life. Yeah. Yeah. In St. Petersburg, Florida, a Pride Parade was held yesterday along Beach Drive. Spectators cheering for beads. Crowds lined the streets in Chicago today in support of Pride 2. And in Santa Fe, New Mexico, Tara Glenn and Jean Stubbs celebrated after getting engaged during the Pride Drive Parade. The couple full of pride and joy as they start a new chapter. We are celebrating the LGBTQ plus community all month long and for many small towns across America, it's the first time that they're actually celebrating pride. So we searched all over the U.S. to find light and love in all of the unexpected places. Take a look. Happy Pride! Pride. Colorful celebrations of love and acceptance from coast to coast. And this year, many communities kicking off their first ever Pride parties in style in Little Rock. We're at Soma Pride in downtown Little Rock in the heart of Soma. The first ever Soma Pride Month party brought the joy as small businesses, local artists, and community members came out in full swing to support. And in the Green Mountain State, Woodstock, Vermont, kicking off the pride of Woodstock as hundreds flock to take part in festivities like the High Heel Race. Just and 4,600 miles away in Seward, Alaska, the picturesque port city celebrating in a land shaped by glaciers. And in Prattville, Alabama, an inaugural pride celebration this community will never forget. Coming from Prattville, it is a small community, so Having something to this extent is, um, it's moving. But it was just last year when their small queer community picnic was protested by a hate group. Instead of retreating into the dark, the organizers of this year's Prattville Pride event were determined to come back bigger and better. Honestly, I can't look out here at this crowd without crying. <laughs> I'm so proud to be a part of this. More than just vibrant personalities and larger than life performances, Prattville Pride proving to be a safe space for patrons and families. It really makes me excited to see kids, adults, everybody just celebrating Pride. Like I never pictured this would be for one, us mm -hmm. in Prattville bringing everybody together with a smile. This is awesome for our family. This has been something they've been looking for in our area for a long time. They were really, really excited to be able to come to their first Pride event and especially for it to be in our hometown, something amazing for us. We now live in an Isaiah 520 world where evil is good and good is evil, where the sin of being a homosexual or transgender is openly celebrated and even glorified. One of the many signs that we are living in the end times is the epidemic of homosexuality that is sweeping the world today. Jesus said he would return at a time when society parallels the days of Lot, as we read in Luke 17, 28 through 30. Likewise, as it was also in the days of Lot, they ate, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built. But on the day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even so will it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. To find out what parallels our days with the days of Lot, we need to go back to the book of Genesis. Genesis 19, 1-5 Now the two angels came to Sodom in the evening, and Lot was sitting in the gate of Sodom. When Lot saw them, he rose to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face toward the ground, and said, My lords, please turn aside to your servant's house and spend the night and wash your feet. Then you may rise up early and go on your way. They said, No, we will spend the night in the town square. But he pressed them strongly. So they turned aside to him and entered his house. And he made them a feast and baked unleavened bread. And they ate. But before they lay down, the men of the city, the men of Sodom, both young and old, all the people to the last man, surrounded the house. And they called to Lot, Where are the men who came to you tonight? Bring them out to us, that we may know them. The term know them isn't a friendly handshake and how are you. It is to know them in a sexual way. What parallels our days with the days of Lot is homosexuality. Just as in the days of Lot, not only is homosexuality widely accepted today, but it's being taught to our kids, just like in Sodom, as we read in verse 4. The men of the city, the men of Sodom, both young and old, all the people to the last man, surrounded the house. Young is the Hebrew word, nar, which means a boy from the age of infancy to adolescence. 
There are many people within the church who are teaching that homosexuality is not a sin, when scripture clearly says it is. This is another sign Jesus gave to look for prior to his second coming, as we read in Matthew 24, 11. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. Homosexuality is strongly condemned in the Bible. Ezekiel 16, 49-50 Look, this was the iniquity of your sister Sodom. She and her daughter had pride, fullness of food, and abundance of idleness. Neither did she strengthen the hand of the poor and needy, and they were haughty and committed abomination before me. Therefore I took them away as I saw fit. What was this prideful abomination committed before God? The answer is found in the book of Leviticus. Leviticus 18.22 You shall not lie with a male as with a woman. It is an abomination. Leviticus 20.13 If a man lies with a male as he lies with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. They shall surely be put to death their blood shall be upon them. God gives mankind a dire warning for the acts of homosexuality in 2 Peter 2.6 and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemn them to destruction, making them an example to those who afterward would live ungodly. God also offers forgiveness to those who are living a life of homosexuality as we read in 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 11. Or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor homosexuals, nor thieves, nor the covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor swindlers, will inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but you were washed, but you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. In honor of Pride Month, Vice President Harris welcomed the original and current cast members of Queer Eye to the White House. Together, they engaged in conversation about representation in media, the progress of LGBTQ rights, and what's at stake for the LGBTQ community in the upcoming election. It's up to us to say to each other, no, no time for apathy right now. No time to say, well, I'm sitting this out. I don't feel good. I don't want to. A recent GLAAD report showed that 94% of LGBTQ voters are likely to cast their ballot in November, with 68% of them supporting President Biden and 15% supporting former President Donald Trump. During its debut in 2003, Queer Eye was a rare representation of LGBTQ individuals in primetime television. Back in 2006, GLAAD reported that just over 1% of TV shows featured LGBTQ characters. Fast forward almost two decades later, and that number has increased to nearly 11%. It was such <laughs> an incredible, groundbreaking thing that history now, 20 years later, I think everyone understands what you guys did. These two get credit because they were the first uh, gay men to be out there being who they were, telling their story and sharing. I don't know if you knew this, but on our end, right. the criteria was, yes, you had to fit into the umbrella of your category, but you had to be openly gay. And as an actor, I remember thinking, oh, so then I'll walk into rooms and spaces and everyone will know. And I mean, I didn't have to worry. <laughs> Throughout the years, the cast has seen the impact of the show, with viewers acknowledging its role in sparking conversations within their households and promoting acceptance of the LGBTQ community. One of the most grateful things I am for that show is that um, so many young people come up to me today on airplanes or in the mall and say, your show helped me come out yeah. because it allowed a safe dialogue with my family to say, oh, gay is okay. President Biden is now here in New York for the grand opening ceremony of the Stonewall National Monument Visitor Center. This is a party scene here in Greenwich Village. As you can see behind me, there is live music. There are lots of people taking a turn looking at that visitor center. Earlier this evening, President Biden and the First Lady were here for this historic event. LGBTQ plus people are some of the most inspiring people I know. President Joe Biden and the First Lady helping to open the Stonewall National Monument Visitor Center here in Greenwich Village. Everyone deserves to be treated with dignity and respect no matter what their background. The Stonewall Inn on Christopher Street is considered the birthplace of the gay civil rights movement. Former President Obama designated the inn a national monument in 2016. Singer and entertainer Elton John joining President Biden to mark this historic occasion. 55 years ago, in this sacred spot of the Stonewall Uprising, gay activists stood strong and ignited a movement that has changed history for the better. Romans 1:18 through 25. 
For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men, who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Because what may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man, and birds, and four-footed animals, and creeping things. Therefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness in the lusts of their hearts, to dishonor their bodies among themselves, who exchanged the truth of God for the lie, and worshipped and served the creature rather than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. Romans chapter 1 tells us God has revealed to mankind that He is the Creator of all things, and that He has made it known to mankind that they are without excuse through His creation that He exists. God demands that we worship Him and recognize Him as the Creator. And when a society does not glorify Him as God, He gives them up to three phases of judgment. Romans 1 verse 24 says, Therefore God also gave them up to uncleanness and the lusts of their hearts. The first phase of judgment is an impure heart. The second phase of judgment is of the body, verses 26 and 27. For this reason God gave them up to vile passions, for even their women exchanged the natural use for what is against nature. Likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust for one another, men with men committing what is shameful, and receiving in themselves the penalty of their error which was due. The third phase of judgment is in verse 28. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a debased mind to do those things which are not fitting. First, the heart is rotten, then the body follows, and then the mind goes. The moral law of God written on the heart has literally been stomped out and replaced with cultural immorality. Immorality now goes in every direction. The mind is corrupt. People don't think right. They advocate all the wretched things and depreciate all the virtuous things. And what flows out of this pornographic, homosexual, depraved culture? All evil, verses 29 through 32 being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil-mindedness. They are whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful, who knowing the righteous judgment of God, that those who practice such things are deserving of death, not only do the same, but also approve of those who practice them. It is evident by looking at society that we are in the third and final judgment on America. In these last days, society has not retained God in their knowledge, and in return, God has given them over to a debased mind to do those things which are not fitting. When a nation tells God that they no longer want or need Him, and actually tell Him to go away so they can wallow in their sins, eventually God says, okay. Hello everyone, happy Pride! We remain in a battle for the soul of America. I know I've said that for a while now. People looked at me when I first said it like I was kidding. I'm not. We're in the battle for the soul of America. But I look around at the pride, hope, and light that all of you, all of you bring. And I know it's a battle we're going to win and continue to make progress. As anyone can plainly see, we are living in the last moments before the return of Jesus Christ. America is in a spiritual battle between good and evil, as we read in Ephesians 6.12. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Fifty-five years ago today, on this hallowed ground, a pivotal story for our nation unfolded. The soul of the nation was literally tested. That's not hyperbole. The soul of the nation was tested. And the heart of this movement was ignited. And the course of history has changed forever. Not just here, but I traveled around the world. They looked at us. They looked at us, and it's part of our foreign policy as well now. This beloved bar became the site of a call to cry for freedom, dignity, and equality, and respect. The rebellion that galvanized, galvanized the LBGTQ plus community all across the nation, and quite frankly, around the world. You, I, I mean, you'd be amazed the number of places I am, whether it's India or other places, where people talk about the gay movement here in the United States of America. I mean it. God warned those who lived after the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah that the sin of homosexuality would be judged severely as we read in 2 Peter 2.6.
and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them to destruction, making them an example to those who afterward would live ungodly. The U.S. has become the world leader in this abominable sin. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in him and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.